Congressman, it's so great to see you here at the DNC. Thank you. It's good to be here. It's very exciting. And we're going to try to channel all this excitement into getting out the vote. Well, yeah. So what, what do you see as unique in this particular convention? Well, one of the things that is unique is the fact that it's been a very short campaign. Uh, Joe Biden had an excellent record, jobs, investments in education, reducing health care costs, fighting for our rights, transportation. He's had a tremendous uh, platform for people to run on, and he decided to uh, drop out, pass the baton on to Kamala Harris. She's had a very short campaign, and that brief campaign is the thing that makes this unique. She had to select her um, uh, vice presidential nominee in an abbreviated uh, time. Uh, the fact that Joe Biden na essentially named Kamala Harris avoided a lot of confusion because had he not done that, we wouldn't know who the nominee would be at this point. We'd be taking the first ballot, second ballot, who knows what. But the fact that he named her and we came together uh, meant that we have a very exciting campaign. Everybody's together and everybody's pointed the same way. And we don't have to change the message. It's the same Biden-Harris created the jobs, reduced the health care costs, transportation bill, investments in climate change, fighting for our rights. It's the same message. So it's very exciting. And we're going to go forward and win. Well, Congressman, you're, of course, the ranking member on the Education Committee. Um, there's been quite a bit of activity on campuses, especially there's been a lot of protests that are happening, a lot of kind of confusion. You can go and get your comment on that reality and how to deal with it. Well, it's a very difficult situation trying to uh, accommodate First Amendment rights to protest with the right of students to be able to attend school without discrimination under Title VI. You cannot allow a hostile environment to, to, to exist. And having that exist at the same time you're allowing freedom of speech uh, that can drift over into anti-Semitism uh, is a challenge. And some have gotten it right and some, frankly, haven't gotten it right. But it is a uh, difficult uh, balance and we just have to make sure they're doing the right thing. What, what do you see as uh, your hope for the future of America? Well, we have a, we're doing a lot. I, I'm the lead Democrat on the Education Workforce Committee, and a lot of our future depends on the success of our committee. Whether or not people can get a good education, get the right job training, and get a good job will, to a large extent, determine uh, their success in life. And so I'm looking forward to the kind of investments we made in the American Rescue Plan Act, the biggest investment in K through 12 education in the history of the United States. So a final question: Do you see any place for charter schools of this or this kind of educational opportunity uh, for people in America? I think our focus ought to be in the public school system. Uh, the charter schools have have a place, but to the extent that they take away from public schools means that you're, it's it's a zero sum sum game. You've taken money away from the public schools. They're challenging. They have all the work to do and to the extent that we can focus and do a good job with the uh, public schools. Public schools are obligated to, to uh, educate dis uh, children with disabilities, children with language, um, English as a second language, and they have to do that. It's very challenging and to the extent we take funds away from that means that they are not able to do as good a job as they can. My focus is on public education. I don't have any problem with other forms of education, but if we fail on the public education, we fail uh, too much and for too many. Thank you very much, Congressman. Thank you.